All right, all right, all right, all right. We are uh, celebrating, if you will, our 100th episode on the uh, MGTC rebuild. Um, don't know if that's good or not. I uh, didn't really expect that it would be 100 episodes, but uh, here we are. So uh, we have something a little special today for our 100th episode. We have uh, Mr. Gary LaFollette, who happens to be the uh, proud owner of this 1947 MGTC, and uh, we're going to have him in-house here in a little bit and, uh, and do a sit-down and um, have him talk a little bit about uh, the history of this car as he knows it. Uh, he's owned it probably um, since the 1960s anyway, which is uh, every bit of 60 years. And um, at uh, 92 years young, he is patiently waiting uh, for it to be finished so he can take it on a drive. So uh, without further ado, here's Mr. Gary LaFollette. Well, I do. I remember this from uh, about <laughs> we when were we were married. <laughs> yeah. So you've had this since 1963? Yeah. And, uh, and how long did you drive it then? You must have drove it 10 or 15 years. Yeah, we drove it, and I went away to had a fellowship to Harvard for a year. And, uh, there was a guy out north of Brownsburg named Frank Litherland, and he, I left it with him. And then when we came back, and, uh, <laughs> you drove it after Harvard. Oh, yeah. yeah, you drove it in seven, the sixties, seventies, So you would still you took the bus to the paper downtown. Yeah, he didn't drive this. Didn't drive I, oh, this was remember. like Sunday afternoon stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. One time, my mother was going to a party, and I had this. I worked on the old Union Empress time, and my night shift was four p.m. to one a.m. Saturday into Sunday, and my mother was going to a party, and uh, so I did drive it to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, that time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well. And it was, you know what they say, it was, uh, it's a fun car, it's one of those cars, as you're saying, only going to say 45 or 50, but when you come to a curve, you don't have to slow down. Yeah, well, and you think you're going a million miles an hour because the wind's in your face and you're kind of low bugs in around. your teeth. Yeah. But you don't have to because, again, it's so Although, nice the steering. yeah, it's you know that. Yeah, yeah, they set up. They, I mean, they did race these. They did back in the day. There were hill climbs, and mm -hmm. and they made uh, superchargers to put on them. Mm -hmm. And they did MGs. Ra they raced a lot. I mean, that's kind of what started the craze here. Let's say in the United States, and and really that's how this car ended up here. As far as I know, it is the servicemen over in Europe after the war and these things were popular and when they came back to the states they wanted these cars and they started importing them and uh, and really this is a TC then there was a TD and a TF and they became more sophisticated as they as they went up into the 50s but they were so popular for a long time they and start, they started racing and locked them so it's an MGTC yes not an MGBGT no, no. Okay. no. Anyway, MG, MG there was an there was an MGTA uh -huh. yeah. and an MGTB were real early cars in the late 30s and mm -hmm. early 40s and the TC was really as far as I remember was made after the war they started making TCs mm -hmm. and they made them for three or four years and then yeah. the MGTD and the TDs were quite a bit different. All of the TCs were right-hand drive, uh, they, even the exported ones. And then the TDs, I think they started making American versions with left-hand drive, and they had steel wheels instead of wire wheels. Yeah, and they went to, I think, what, 19 to 16. And yeah, this. yeah, yeah. And, uh, so it wasn't, and I think you had told us that, that a serviceman, this car was delivered new in Belgium, and then a serviceman had it and shipped it all over the world. Well, we don't know what happened between, you know, when it was sold to Belgium, mm -hmm. and then Jim Dillon gets it in Dover, Delaware in 1956. Mm -hmm. and, he and was he in, was he the one who was in the Air Force then? Yeah. 
Okay. And you had said somewhere along the line that the car was in Venezuela? No, I, if it was, I don't think so. Unless okay. Yeah, and I don't think, you know, I could talk to him again. I talked to him the other day, hmm. uh, whether he remembers it. But I think it was kind of a dead end when they bought it in Dover. Okay, and then there was something about Buffalo. Yeah, he was, that's where he was from. Oh, okay. And then when he got out of the service, he still had it till 63, and then a buddy of mine and I flew up there and drove back here. Hmm. Well, so did you keep this in the garage at one World War uh -huh. yeah. We all had one car when I was a kid. Uh -huh. This one? No, 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 we had a car. Uh, uh, okay, the Maverick. This, so no, my mom had a station a wagon. Oh, yeah, I remember the station wagon. Yeah. I didn't get a Maverick till we were a senior in high school. Okay. <laughs> now this sat in the right side of the garage cupboard. Uh -huh. with so them. maybe tell me a little bit, how did it end up in the body shop? Did you put it there? At, well, Kitterman. No. Oh, uh, Kitterman. No, someone broke in, remember? What well, what Kitterman told me it was that it was in a body shop that that ended up going bankrupt, and he had to actually get the police to go in and help him get the car out. But prior to that, it it had some parts sold off it. But I don't understand why it was in the body shop in the first place. I thought it was getting painted, Dad. Oh, okay. I so thought Kitterman sent it down there to get painted. Yeah, I see what you mean. I forgot about that. But what's okay. odd is that when we found it, it was in pieces. Yeah. Not found it when we brought it to you as a Right, so Kitterman is the one that took it all apart. Right. He was, he was, it was one of those deals that, you know, he said, I'll, I'll work out. He, was, he, he makes said in my Yeah. He, he does model work. He's, he made I made four or five trips up there to see where it was, and, and every once in a while he'd send me a text. I found some more parts. You know, it's actually some of the stuff that he found was, it seems insignificant, but little parts for the door hinges and there was some other parts that I didn't have and I went, oh, I've been looking for that. Many years as it sat, I think it's almost, well, since the 80s, mm -hmm. yeah. when, when it went to the body shop and yeah. till now that it's, that it's <laughs> all in one piece in one place. gave me something. I don't remember exactly what it was. The, but was, the fellow that took it apart earlier, John Kitterman, mm -hmm. thinks it may have been, there were five colors of ivory. It might have been an ivory. Yeah, I, I'm leaning towards it was red back but once upon been. a time. There was some a panel in the back that had red on it. They, they came red, black, ivory, green. Um, I, I don't know, but you know, I mean, it's it's in there somewhere. I just can't pull yeah, it up. That's okay, but I didn't think green was a color that yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. It was? And, and they had, normally, there wouldn't have been green with a green interior. They would have been green with... Something else. A, an ivory interior or something, you know. That makes uh, sense. You would have had maybe black with a green interior. It was, they uh, always did them two-tone, is it? Yeah. And oh, okay. a lot of them, a lot of them, you'll see the, the firewall there, the footwell, it's gray. This uh, it's on. painted the same as the car, but from what I determined, the original first cars, those were painted gray, so that's why I did that. Sure. Gotcha. And, okay. gotcha. you know, um, you know, green is that sort of British color, isn't it? British racing green. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. It matches and, the seats. Uh, yeah. Boy, it looks yeah. Cool. So, and that's the, that goes that piece. Goes yeah, the, that's the backrest for the oh. seat. I've had the seats in. And I just set the bottom cushions in there because I've been taking the floorboards in and out. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that top piece there above the dash is just sitting on there because there's a lot of wiring and stuff under that I had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I had to make all the wiring for this. Really? And uh, we've had to make everything really from scratch because a lot of that stuff was either old and decrepit or missing. But I think we've got all the systems to function, all the lights to work, horn to work, you know, I think everything's working the way it should, all the dash lights and all that sort of stuff. So I've got to do some some mounting tabs and stuff under there and once I get that done then I'll put that top on and of course there's a windshield uh, that sticks mm -hmm. up that goes mm -hmm. on top of that too. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's a hood. Um, now the hood and the windshield are out in the trailer. I put them, all, all the parts in there to a long time ago to protect them. Right. Um, there's a there's a convertible top that went with this. Yeah. And I have the top framework. The canvas obviously is no good. Right. 
I have the side, there are like uh, side, curtains. side curtains that go in, and, and I have those. They would need refurbished. Um, at this stage of the game, if this was my car, probably what I would do is either leave it alone or have a, some of the guys made a flat vinyl tonneau cover over the rear section there, mm -hmm. and then you just drove it as an open car. You really didn't drive it with the top and the side I curtains. Know, I, but I had right one. For a perfectly sunny day. Yeah, yeah not today. Yeah. I, went, uh, I would say, to be very honest with you, that it's not the first time that this car has had the wood replaced from what I saw. So, of course, it's, you know, and 1947. It's older than I am, so... <laughs> So, Dad, well, was it the running boards next to the doors that were stolen? Not from you, but... Yeah, yeah, they're not the correct running boards. Because it'd be fun this summer. <laughs> when yeah, the weather, it, it when really... When the weather's nice. It really needs to be out of here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ha, <laughs> started. Are you going to video this? I should videotape this. Okay, it sounds like the 40s. It's, uh... Okay. to California right no. you drive it around it's, you I don't think you'd ever wear it out mm -hmm. um, what is this red thing in front the little red thing here? that's the horn okay. oh, and okay. normally they were where that's red they were chrome uh -huh. and I'm probably going to paint that black just because that red kind of yeah the red kind of yeah jumps out at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but that's the horn that's called a badge bar so that round bar going okay. and Back in the day, people had, like, if you belonged to the 3A, they put a little badge there, or the MG Club, they put a little badge there, and you could mount a fog light on there. So it was just an accessory rail to mount stuff. Gotcha. I, haven't, um, I haven't put new tires on it, mm -hmm. if, and, but uh, put new tubes in the tires. Mm -hmm. I have one wheel over there that I still need to sandblast and repaint to match the others. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, I, okay. You know, a set of tires is probably seven or eight hundred dollars. Yeah. And if, you, you know, if you're going to drive it to the corner or downtown to the show, these are probably okay. I wouldn't... We're not going to drive. I We're wouldn't not. wail around on them cause, just because they're old. Yeah. Um, no, they're good. But yeah. this, and this is a car that is real happy at about 45 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. It'll go faster than that, but you know, on a two lane road, sort of driving around with the wind blowing and stuff, 45, 50 miles an hour, it's it's oh, a happy that's car. Right. That's right, yeah, I know um, I had one back, way back. <coughs> we'll yeah, keep it at 40. Well, <laughs> We're not gonna go okay. flying down the It's okay, you just have to remember it's an old car, yeah. it's got drum brakes and it's, Hard to steer, and it's not, you're not going to whip up to the corner and stop on a dime, you know? No, um, no that's right. But you and I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, that I could even fit in it to take it for a test ride. So I, probably the only thing on this car that I would be suspicious of at this point is the fuel tank. I did not replace it. I cleaned it out. Yeah. I put a filter down on the other side that you can see through so if it gets clogged. But old fuel tanks are notorious for having a lot of crap in them, and then you start driving the car, pretty soon it. <laughs> yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah. the fuel tank is like $1,200. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> for me, I'm willing to experiment. Mm -hmm. now, the shocks aren't, you can't really consider them shock absorbers by what we have <laughs> today. No, but I, when I first had one before I went into service, mm -hmm. I drove eight hours to home. I had to stop five times to get yeah, the yeah, there you go. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, I'm looking at this, but I only see two pedals there, and uh, but it's a clutch, manual transmission. Yeah, yeah, you have two pedals. If you look all the way over to the right, there's a little round ball. I see that's that. a throttle yeah. pedal. Well, that sounds so, great, then. So um, we'll start looking into where wolf. its next place to rest will be. Yeah.